will bring you football action as Celtic meet Liverpool for the Dubai Cup and the unofficial title of the best club in Great Britain and top quality ice hockey from Edinburgh. The ice hockey later in the programme, but let's kick off with football and I'm joined in the commentary box by Dennis Law for the big match, Celtic against Liverpool. And here's Liverpool's lineup. Kenny Dalglish, their manager, taking the opportunity to bring David Burrows back at number three. He's missed the last eight games after getting food poisoning and then losing his place to Steve Staunton. Barry Venison has returned. It's his first game since mid-December. He's been out with a calf injury. And John Aldridge is rested. He, in fact, is on the substitute bench. Celtic, well, they're hampered by injuries to their captain Roy Aitken and their vice-captain Tommy Burns, both left behind in Glasgow. They bring in 18 years old Steve Fulton. He starts the match for the first time. He'll be in midfield. And also starting for the first time, half a million pound striker Tommy Coyne, signed last month from Dundee. So it's Liverpool who'll get this third Dubai Champions Cup competition underway. Liverpool in the red shirts, attacking from right to left. Celtic in their famous green and white hoops. Liverpool, in fact, previous winners of this competition. They met Celtic here in 1986 and won that uh, match on penalties. And indeed, last year's clash between Rangers and Everton, then the English and Scottish champions, also went to penalties before Rangers won. Liverpool with a new-look formation tonight, with Barry Dennison slotting in at right back, his usual position, which has meant that Stevie Nicholl has been pushed through into midfield. And Liverpool here with an early throw. The pitch, incidentally, may look very green to you back home, but it's quite bumpy and patchy, particularly in the centre of the field. Barnes for Liverpool to Nicholl. Cut out well by Grant for Celtic, but now wearing the unfamiliar number eight, it's Venison for Liverpool, looking to pick out Barnes. In fact, uh, the offside decision against John Barnes. Chris Morris, right back for Celtic tonight. An Englishman comes from Cornwall and hasn't missed a game since he joined Celtic from Sheffield Wednesday two years ago. He's going to have a tough time tonight, though, against John Barnes, really in form at the moment. Miller lost control. Whelan for Liverpool. And there's some tackling there, which underlines the competitive nature of this game. McMahon with a quickly taken free kick to Houghton. Venison getting into space on the right. He saw him. Beardley in support. But he looks for Barnes in the middle. And a nice turn there by John Barnes. And the ball has crossed the line. It's a goal kick. With a lovely moment of skill, Dennis, from uh, a man, John Barnes, that uh, the locals here really have come to see. And uh, Bonner getting a crack in keeping him out there. A uh, good player, as we all know, tremendous skill, and, uh, you know, it's very warm up there. We went on the pitch earlier on. It is very bumpy, but it is a very warm evening, and you think that the way the game has gone at the moment, it certainly uh, will suit Liverpool's style of play, I'm sure, much more than selfing than what we've seen. Liverpool, of course, the normal casual self knocking about, and then that quick break. Celtic in the opening minutes of this game are appearing to play very fast and are hustling uh, Liverpool. And I would think in this heat, Alan, that uh, it's certainly at the moment favours Liverpool. Liverpool in possession again with Ablett, looking for Barnes, headed clear by Mick McCarthy. That's the Celtic throw. Steve Nicholl, who's not missed a game for Liverpool this season, or indeed last season, and being talked of as a contender for Player of the Year. Morris for Celtic. McCarthy. McCarhill is the other central defender. And Rogan completing the whole back four. And Rogan gives it away. Then he were playing here in the Al Nassar Stadium, which was actually opened by Liverpool 11 years ago when they sent a side to play the local team. And one of the Celtic directors just explaining the finer points of the game to. Uh, two of the locals who really do want to learn so much about football, a growing sport in this part of the world. And indeed, the national team, Dubai, had an outstanding victory over Kuwait recently in a World Cup qualifier. That's really got them excited.
to Liverpool then when the ball is finally retrieved. Venison will take it. Still nil-nil. The first ten minutes have elapsed. Here's Barnes for Liverpool. Burrows. Incidentally, I mentioned the two previous Champions Cup uh, matches here in Dubai having gone to penalties. If the teams are level after 90 minutes, there's no extra time. It's just a straight penalty shootout. So Barnes is sent crashing to the ground by Mackay Hill. Liverpool, as ever, take the free kick very quickly. And Barnes back in possession again here. Good skill. And a lovely ball for Nicholl. And Nicholl wins the first corner of the game from Morris's challenge. On the Liverpool bench there, Ronnie Moran, Roy Evans with manager Kenny Dalglish. Corner quickly taken, Burrows to Barnes. Burrows again did well. And the ball had crossed the line, so uh, that's a goal kick for Celtic. But typical of Liverpool's play, the way they build it up so slowly, and all of a sudden uh, there'll be a player like Nicol, and particularly on the left-hand side, make that quick break, get him behind the selfie defence. And this is, of course, a typical Liverpool play. They lull you into just knocking it down midfield, and then all of a sudden they'll hit a long ball and uh, danger. kick then aimed towards Coyne he turned it on there was a suspicion of handball by Burrows but uh, play has gone on and Burrows with a very good tackle Barnes on to McMahon battling with McStay in the middle now Whelan to Houghton Beardley McCarr Hill though good covering Launches another big kick. Fulton headed it on, and a mistake in the middle here. And Liverpool in trouble. And they just backed away. And Celtic have taken the lead. Mark McGee couldn't believe his luck. It was as though Liverpool were waiting for a, an offside flag or something, but it never came. And they just backed away and left him to virtually walk the ball into the net. Big spaces, certainly in the Liverpool back four. Most unusual for them. It goes without saying. And McGee said, well, I'll get on with it, and he did. And with 12 minutes of the game gone, McGee has given Celtic a one-goal lead. Dennis Law. Incredible, really, because it was a hopeful ball played down the middle there, and really, in a way, it was the bounce. It bounced very, very hard, high indeed over Gillespie's head, and there was McGee uh, with a tremendous chance. I mean, it was no way that it was offside whatsoever. Took it so cleanly, had so, so much time to look up, look where the goalkeeper was, and then just knock it into the far corner. A good goal, but a bad mistake by the Liverpool defence. Miller. Coin has peeled away in the middle here. McGee's up there too. Good play. Oh, and Liverpool a little fortunate then, as the ball cleared the head of the young midfield player, Fulton. Venison was certainly fooled by it, but here he is on the attack with Barnes. A lot of Celtic players ahead of John Barnes here. And he did well to make anything of it. The ball had finally crossed the line, so that's a goal kick. But there's a new edge to the game now, Dennis. Certainly, and uh, Celtic playing, as you said, Alan, with a, a great deal of confidence. And uh, Miller on this uh, right-hand side will cause Burroughs uh, no end of problem. But uh, when Liverpool broke away there, you notice how many... Celtic players go back. They must have been something like seven players they got behind Barnes and got behind the ball. So that uh, they certainly take this game seriously. And that goal has given them a great deal of confidence. Sixteen minutes gone then here in Dubai. And it's Celtic one, Liverpool nil. Look forward for Liverpool. Given away though. Fulton to Morris. Made room for himself nicely. Look for McGee and a good header. Applet underneath it. McGee again. Now Miller. One back by Whelan at the expense of a throw. Morris who really likes to get forward a lot. 
Good challenge on coin, but the ball breaks to McStay. Tackled by Houghton. And now Gillespie. And suddenly a gap opens up for him, and he finds Barnes superbly. Barnes facing McCarthy here. McCarthy coming across as well, and McCarthy got in a vital block. That was good defending by Mick McCarthy. He was actually serving a four-match suspension for domestic games at the moment. McCarthy signed for half a million pounds from Manchester City a couple of years ago. And a very popular player at Celtic. Here's Burrows though for Liverpool. And he's done well here. Good looking cross as well, and it came in to McCarthy. Drifting in on the edge of the penalty area. Whelan finally coming in behind him and getting the header which went just wide. And Celtic then got fair warning that Liverpool, as Dennis was saying earlier, when you uh, think they're going through a slow period of the game, they can suddenly explode into action like that. Well, of course, it was a very good cross indeed, Alan, wasn't it? And uh, a powerful header by Whelan which just went past the post. Rose, Nicol, Gillespie, this is Venice, long ball but offside both Barnes and uh, Peter Beardsley, if you're just joining us, the score here in Dubai is Celtic 1, Liverpool 0 with 19 minutes of this game gone, Celtic Really enjoying a good opening to this match here. Grant for them in midfield. McCarthy. Flicked on by Miller, but straight to Burrows. Now McMahon. Give it away. Morris. And he does the same. Now Nickel for Liverpool. And for Beardsley. McCarthy in quickly, though. Helped by Miller. Stay. Good football. Coin. Only McGee forward, but he finds him. Fulton on the left, and Rogan outside him. And it's the 18 year old Fulton. That's a good looking ball as well towards Coin. Ambler is in there, and Coin maybe could have given Celtic another goal. Well, I must say, Liverpool really do look at the moment as though they've just stepped off the aeroplane. Because at the back, there are uncharacteristic gaps developing. Nobody seems to know what the next man's going to do, and Coyne Dennis might have scored that. I'm sure he should have uh, done far better than he did. As you said, Alan, the uh, centre of the Liverpool defence, certainly at sixes and sevens, and particularly Ablett, uh, who really is not a central defender. I mean, he's a right back, left back, and when he's in a situation like that, he certainly gets in trouble, and Coyne maybe should have scored that second goal. Well, that really would have been something if Celtic had increased their lead. But Liverpool have a free kick inside the Celtic half now. John Barnes needs to produce a little bit of magic here to get Liverpool's confidence going again. Here's Burrows. Forward to Whelan. Ablett. Beardsley. McMahon in support. Still McMahon. He did well. Beardsley playing it into Barnes. And then the shot by Venison, who came from right back. Well, Celtic will be quite pleased if the Liverpool efforts come from uh, outside the penalty area. That shot by Venison, no danger whatsoever to the Celtic team. So Pat Bonham not really been called upon to make a save yet. Gillespie with a fine header. McCarthy, difficult bounce as you can see how hard the pitch is. And here goes Celtic again. Coin. McGee. Still McGee. Now Coin again. Grobelar had to come quickly. Down goes Coin. The referee waves play on. Grobelar still in trouble. Then there's an appeal for handball as Gillespie went up. And Liverpool get away with it again. But I must say once more, Dennis. They look all over the place then. Absolute chaos in there. It, it, at times, it doesn't feel uh, the Liverpool defence uh, know each other whatsoever. And there doesn't seem to be a great deal of interest. And uh, there could have been a, a chance for a penalty, but uh, Neil Misley was certainly down. Then it was a handball, but certainly not typical of Liverpool's defending. It's a good ball. Liverpool looking stretched again here. Point. McKee is also in support. Oh, good skill. A fine effort, Grobelar having difficulty saving it. 
Liverpool in all kinds of trouble. McGee and Coyne combining to provide real problems. Coyne's first shot. Robola unhappy, couldn't control it. McGee came in and there was a vital tackle then by Ablett, which uh, might have been responsible for that miss. But still, uh, Dennis, Liverpool at the back again, looking so shaky. Well, they did second before. That wasn't a lovely run. And, and McGee should have done better here. As you say, probably Ablett just put them off there. Uh, but maybe that should have been the second goal for Celtic. But a lovely run by Coyne, causing all sorts of problems in the Liverpool defence. And it was lovely to see the close... Uh, control of coin there beating two and three players you don't see that so often in this nice to see good kick the heart of the liverpool defense again Ablett is there the celtic win it back now it's miller turn back from mcstay stay survives two tackles and finds miller again good play by miller here and liverpool concedes the corner clear the Celtic in their pre-match planning have considered that Liverpool have a potential problem at the centre of their defence because most of their attacks have been rooted that way. Well, on that occasion, Miller's magic on the wing uh, helps to earn this corner. McGee on the line there. Miller just behind him, in fact. Robola stretched and did so well. been fouled as he went up for it uh, elbowed in fact could he have been Mr McCarthy could he do such a thing I would have thought so would you Celtic just that bit uh, sharper in the tackle uh, it's throw into Liverpool is McGee the man whose uh, goal separates the sides moves back Nickel, Burroughs and Barnes one by McCarthy and that's the half time whistle here in Dubai. Nick McCarthy leads the Celtic players off. Mark McGee's early goal giving them the lead. They could have had a, two more probably with McCoyne and McGee himself. It's been an uncharacteristic 45 minutes for Liverpool. Not at their best. And at half time they trail by. Welcome back to Dubai as Celtic get the second half underway here in the Dubai Champions Cup, leading by one goal to nil at half-time. Liverpool, during the interval, have made a significant substitution, bringing on their leading scorer this season, John Aldridge. They've actually taken off Gary Ablett, and that's meant a, a tactical switch, with Steve Nicholl moving to centre-back alongside Gary Gillespie, and obviously Aldridge has gone forward. again and McCarhill well, here's Gillespie for Liverpool stay dispossessed by Gillespie turned forward by Anton Rogan Robola well there was a time when he would have uh, thought about dribbling that one upfield older and wiser and more mature he was saying before the match doesn't do those silly things anymore needs to keep his place under pressure from Mike Cooper here's McMahon for Liverpool now Barnes. Good ball. Venice. Out. Held in towards Aldridge. And he was desperately close to getting the touch as Bonner came out and did just enough, I think. The referee's given a free kick, but I suppose, Dennis, straight away that underlined just uh, how good Aldridge is at getting on the end of things for Liverpool. Well, it, it was a lovely cross. It uh, certainly tested the Celtic goalkeeper, but John Aldridge was the player uh, in there, and it's uh, typical of a striker uh, sneaking about inside the penalty, looking for anything at all. And really, in a way, it was Bono that put Aldridge off, and I think uh, you must put it down to the keeper. Really, uh, that Aldridge didn't score. A new purpose about Liverpool now. As Barnes through to McMahon, it was a good ball, and Bonner again read it splendidly. This is Fulton, a young man who's impressed greatly on his first full appearance for Celtic, the 18-year-old Steve Fulton, and he wins the free kick. George Best in the centre of the picture there amongst the uh, celebrities. He actually played in a celebrity match which preceded the main game here. Celtic get themselves in trouble. Beardsley on the end of that back, back, back. And Bonner did marvellously well, but Beardsley will be very disappointed. 
Normally, you would have put money on Peter Beardsley to score then. But Bonner came out quickly, stood his ground, made himself big and made it a difficult angle. And in the end, uh, his shoulder got the ball away. Corner to Liverpool. Barnes whips it in and... Oh, Bonner for a moment. Gave Liverpool hope. But then he regained possession. And Celtic on the attack. Point. They set the ball for Grobelart. Kikapi, a difficult bounce. Certainly contributed to Celtic's uh, goal in the first half and the bounce deceived the Liverpool central defenders. But a near miss then... Uh, Dennis, as far as Liverpool were concerned? Well, really, it's one of those that uh, you dream of uh, defenders knocking the ball back to the keeper and, of course, making a hash of it. And you've only then got the goalkeeper to beat. And uh, although Bonner did extremely well in putting Beardsley off, you feel in that situation a man of his uh, calibre should have gone on and equalised for Liverpool. Free kick to Liverpool on the halfway line. Houghton takes it quickly and finds Barnes. Half an hour of the match remaining. Liverpool trail by a goal to nil. Beardsley chasing McCarthy. And he gets there first. Turned in towards McMahon. Good effort. But Bonner read it very carefully. And was in the right place. But a good move, Dennis. A lovely move and a good combination with uh, Beardsley and Barnes before uh, McMahon got uh, a lovely header and a nice save by Bonner. A good kick by Bonner, straight at uh, McMahon. Now a venison. That's a great ball. Houghton in space. Aldridge in the middle, inevitably. The cross cut out by McCarr Hill. Back it comes to McMahon. And that's a goal kick. So Liverpool threatened once again. But Celtic uh, look pretty sound at the back. Steve McMahon back to his outstanding best. He had a patch in the middle of the season when, by his own admission, he wasn't playing as well as he had been. Bonner taking a bit of time as Celtic want to make their substitution. And I think it's Miller that's gone off and the man coming on here is Billy Stark. Experienced former Aberdeen man. Now Whelan. And still. Still, everything coming through him. He finds out. He finds Venice. Aldridge is in the middle. He was the target. McCarthy with the clearance. <laughs> Judging by some of the shots from the Liverpool bench, they're taking this very seriously. And Celtic are too, of course. Venice. Gillespie. Send in towards McMahon. Oh, it was a good effort and good save. Didn't get a lot of power behind him, McMahon, but it was a good effort falling to the ground. Tried to catch out the goalkeeper, but uh, Bonner wasn't having any of it. Very difficult, uh, the ball coming over your head, and as you say, Al didn't get hold of it. So I, and I'm, I'm sure if he uh, had have, uh, hit it properly, then I don't think Bonner would have any chance, but just didn't get a hold of it. A little under 20 minutes to go. I think Celtic are going to make a second substitution here. Presumably Walker will be the player who comes on. McStay is going off. Yes, I think Paul McStay got a little bit of a, a knock uh, a couple of minutes before uh, over in that uh, far side of midfield when there was a couple of uh, harsh tackles. I, think, uh, I don't think it's anything serious, but uh, I'm sure that Bill McNeil will want him for Saturday. Yes, very much Celtic's... Uh, most valuable player, and as Billy McNeil was saying yesterday, uh, they haven't even got enough money in Dubai to buy him. So he's gone off, Andy Walker's come on. But Liverpool have the ball with Barnes on the left. So they could use both their substitutes. Liverpool just the one. Aldridge. Wheeler chipped it in to McMahon again, who keeps getting forward in the second half into good goal scoring positions. Still, Celtic hold on to their lead. McGee at the other end. Nice little back header. Gillespie reaches it ahead of Walker. And Liverpool just keep possession. 
now with Bennett whose control was uh, a little bit lacking there but he got away with it McMahon Barnes on the left here's Liam Aldridge forward red shirts arriving he looks for Aldridge and finds him Aldridge it's one down and checking by the rules there are more Liverpool fans in Dubai than there are Celtic because that really brought the crowd to life John Aldridge a brilliant ball by John Barnes, picked him out over the head of the defender, Rogan. And Aldridge in this situation, well, you could bet your mortgage on him. And he slid it home in the 28th minute of the second half to bring Liverpool back into the picture. John Aldridge gets his 14th goal in the last 14 games and his 24th of the season. And it's Celtic 1. Liverpool won, and what a grandstand finish we've got in prospect now, Dennis Law. Yes, and I couldn't uh, really add anything more to what you said. It was a beautiful ball, uh, ball by uh, John Barnes coming over the selfie defender. If anybody in the world in, to make a position like that to score, then you'd pick John Aldridge. A absolute perfect ball. And Liverpool are make a substitution. Steve Staunton, obviously not a superstitious type. Wearing number 13 will come on, and it's a straight swap if you like because he's going to take the place of uh, David Burrow so it's uh, one left full back for another Roy Evans one of the Liverpool coaches that helps him on and David Burrow comes on Barn storms and outside it flowing move this by Liverpool three players in the centre here for the young left back finds McMahon Venison arrives in support on this side. Now McMahon again. Liverpool keeping possession. Brilliant by McMahon. And then he just clipped it against McCarthy. And Liverpool looks so dangerous. Grant gets it away. Celtic under real pressure here. Gillespie now for Liverpool. Good run by the big centre-back. And he nearly set out into space. And Celtic pushed up hoping for an offside. Four minutes on the clock. It's Celtic one, Liverpool one. Bonner with the kick. Grant, leaving it to Fulton. McCarhill forward. Not a good ball, straight to Nickel. Now Barnes. Houghton leaves it to Beardley. And then to Houghton. McMahon takes over. Offside. <laughs> well, John Aldridge, uh, either he was very quick to spot the flag going up or uh, he fancies himself as a handball player as well. I think really that, uh, give him the benefit of the doubt that he saw the flag up because it would have been an awful header. <laughs> So it's looking increasingly like the Dubai Cup will be decided for the third successive year on penalties, or at least the third successive time in the competition. But wait, Celtic on the attack with Star. Too far, because Venison has come in and read it as coin threatened on the far post. Good defending by Venison, man. Very good. Corner to Celtic. Rubble our weights. Fulton's kick. McCarthy getting up higher than anyone. And Rubble our first to reach it. Beardley on the barn. Well, it was a good run, but Morris also defended well for Celtic. And there's the final whistle. So for the third time, the Dubai Cup ends all level at the end of 90 minutes. The game will now be decided by a penalty shootout. Five penalties to each side. And as you can see, the first one will be taken by Celtic by Mick McCarthy, who's had an outstanding game. And facing him in the Liverpool goal is Bruce Grobola.
Oh dear, what a very unhappy start for Celtic. McCarthy blasts his penalty high and wide and not at all handsome. And straight away now Celtic are under pressure. And as it happened, Grobola went the wrong way as well, but a poor penalty. How ironic, because he played so well in the 90 minutes. So John Aldridge steps up to the spot, Liverpool's first choice penalty taker of course, Pat Bonner will face him, Celtic having already missed, and Aldridge gives Liverpool the lead from the spot. He can, you don't get any extra goals for it, but he also sent Bonner the wrong way. 1-0 to Liverpool from the spot. Aldridge collects his second goal here in Dubai. And a satisfied smile as Aldridge makes it 1-0 on penalty. So Grant steps up to take the second Celtic penalty and he beats Grobelar. So Celtic get themselves back in contention of course that side-footed kick by Peter Grant but remember although it's 1-1 they are behind so to speak because uh, Liverpool's second penalty could come now but at least Celtic are still in the hunt with that kick Peter Beardley steps up to the spot and he scored a few in his time in uh, first division fixtures for Liverpool from penalties can he do so again He can. That's 2-1 to Liverpool. Peter Beadley, calm as you like, kicking out the corner of the net. Bonner went the right way but couldn't get there. So Beardley makes it 2-1 to Liverpool. And now it's the turn of uh, Coyne, Tommy Coyne, Celtic half a million pound signing to try and beat Bruce Grobelar from the spot. Which he does. A nice one by Coyne. So it's 2-2. Two, two. And again, the goalkeeper's uh, not guessing that well at the moment. And of course it is all about guessing, really. Because uh, you've just got to try and play a hunch Steve McMahon, the next Liverpool man. Ooh, and he's missed it. So that really does even things up, and that makes it very interesting indeed. McMahon misses. And so it's 2-2. Two -two. Bonner will be the first to admit it wasn't the best penalty, and he was given every chance of saving it straight at him really although he died the right way that was important 2-2 on penalties then Walker the next Celtic player to try his hand from the spot and in fact it would of course if he net play Celtic in front and he has a 3-2 to Celtic very confidently struck Walker, of course, coming on as a late substitute. They couldn't have allowed him to take one if he hadn't been on the field at the end of 90 minutes. So that was uh, good work from the bench to get him on. 3-2. Steve Staunton. As I was saying, I hope he's not superstitious. He's wearing 13. He's got to take a penalty. Well, maybe he will be superstitious now. It hit the foot of the post and bounced away and Celtic are leading 3-2 on penalties so if the next one goes in from Celtic they win Stark will be the man who will take the vital kick as we see Staunton's effort hitting the foot of the post Celtic lead 3-2 on penalties and if Stark scores this one then Celtic will win the Dubai Cup Robolar knows that only too well 
Well, a little bit of nervous psychological moment for Stark as he had to re-spot the ball. Billy Stark faces Bruce Grobelard to try and give Celtic victory. And he's done so. Billy Stark makes it 4-2 on penalties. And that sweetly struck shot into the corner. Grobelard was close, but not close enough. Means that Celtic have won the Dubai Champions Cup and with it the unofficial title of Champions of Great Britain. So the players celebrate. So Mark McGee, the acting skipper of Celtic, leads his team up to the rostrum where they will receive the Dubai Champions Cup reversing the result of 1986 when they lost to Liverpool here on penalties. And some may call it a friendly, but it's a piece of silverware nonetheless. And when it's gained by beating Liverpool, it has more significance and importance than usual. Victory for Celtic then. And after the break, we'll be going to Edinburgh for ice hockey, the final of the Capital Food Scottish Cup. Air Bruins taking on Murrayfield Racers. That's in a couple of minutes.